Hi, my name's Miss Merchant and I'm the Head of Science at the Hindburn Academy. I've prepared some short videos and experiments for you to have a go at and try. Hope you're keeping yourselves safe and well and we look forward to seeing you in September. Hi Year 6, I'm Mrs Elston McKnight and I'm a science teacher at Hindburn Academy. I've recorded some videos for you to have a go at some practicals at home over the summer and look forward to seeing you in September. Hi Year 6, when you finally join us in the lab, you'll quickly understand that there's quite a lot of hazards. Now a hazard is something that can cause injury or harm in some way. So for example, somebody leaves a bag on the floor, that's a hazard because somebody could trip over it and fall and hurt themselves. Okay, so what I would like you to do is have a look at this picture carefully and just see if you can spot as many hazards um, as possible and then just have a think, how could you avoid that danger? So when you come to do some experiments on the bottle of chemicals, um, you will see kind of one or two of these hazard symbols. You need to be aware of what they actually mean. Okay, so there's nine on here and you can see down the side that there are nine kind of labels. What I want to do, or I want you to do, is see if you can match the label to the right picture. All the answers will be at the end of the PowerPoint, but try to have a go at them on your own first. So we use a lot of equipment in science lessons uh, throughout your time at high school. These are just some of the common ones really. And these diagrams are showing you the scientific diagrams and we draw them um, because it's easier to draw them than it is to try and draw um, the objects as they are. You'll see that the Bunsen burner has kind of um, got two diagrams to it. Generally, if you were going to draw a diagram, I would expect you to use the arrow and heat underneath just to show that it's a Bunsen burner. Again, just making it as simple as possible. Um, in order to draw it. So that does mean that I have given you one of the answers already, but can you name any of the other eight remaining pieces of equipment? Hi Year 6, I'm Miss McPhee and I'm the Science Technician at the Academy. Today I'm going to do something really interesting. I'm going to incubate these eggs and we will have leaving sets. There are many species of leaving sets. This one is called Billion and this is what they will look like when they're fully grown. I have 10 eggs in here and um, I'm going to put them into this container to incubate them and they need lots of air so I'll put lots of little holes in the lid. They also need moisture so I'm going to incubate them on the kitchen towel and I know how to do this. So I'm going to fold the kitchen towel over And they're ready for the eggs. Now I'm going to carefully moisten the kitchen towel because the leaping sets need to get moist and warm. 
watering. And then voila! Now I'm going to carefully put the eggs in. There we go. We have 10 eggs and hopefully we will have 10 leaving eggs in three months time. So there we go. The eggs have been ready. These particular leaving eggs found in the Philippines in damp rainforests, tropical rainforests, so they need to get moist and warm. So to keep them warm, I have a heat mat. I'm going to plug this in. On and so the eggs are in, so sit on the mat and keep it nice and warm and the same temperature all the time. Now they've got the perfect conditions to grow and transform into leaving set. All they have to do now is keep them moist daily and when they hatch we will keep them in a tank like this. It has vents on the top so they get the air and lots of room. They'll live on, they feed on bramble leaves which we will collect when they are hatched and ready to, ready to eat. And when you join us in September, hopefully they will be in the lab. Hi Year 6, I'm Mrs Evans and for my science experiment today I'm going to do diffusion of skittles. So, skittles are basically just made from sugar and food dye um, and when we mix that food dye with water it will dissolve into the water and it should spread out from the skittle. So we're going to see what sort of patterns we can make. I'm going to take a few skittles and I'm going to arrange them around the outside of my plate don't need to be in any sort of neat pattern, just fill the whole outside of your plate. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to pour the water right in the middle of my plate until it just touches the skittles. Okay, so this is the volcano and these are the things that you will need, which you can do at home. You will need the um, a glass bottle or a bottle, it doesn't have to be glass. It could be like a Sprite bottle or a Coke bottle. You will need a um, bottle.
bottle of vinegar or some sort of vinegar. You will need bicarbonate of soda. Please excuse my dog, um, he wants to also be involved in the experiment. So uh, you need some bicarb of soda and then a teaspoon or something like that that you can use to put the experiment together with. Now, this is my volcano that I made earlier and you can do the same. So you get some cardboard or you can do it with paper mache, put it all together, make it look like a volcano. Then what you need to do is place the vinegar into the bottle. So the best bottle is the ones that narrow at the top. So the narrower you can get it, the better. So you need to put your vinegar in there. So I'm just going to carefully pour some vinegar in. It doesn't matter how much you put in, just to try and get quite a big bit in. I'm just going to give it a bit of a shake, like that, just to get it all in. Okay. Uh, it's been a bit slow, so I'm going to see if I can unscrew the top. Nope, let's carry on going. You might get a little bit messy when you're doing this. You might want to get an adult to help you. So try and get a good amount in there, good volume, then put the vinegar to one side. I'm then going to put my volcano, set it up like that with the top, the mouth of the volcano being there, okay. Then you want to open up your bicarbonate of soda, which I'm just having some trouble with. Okay, so now I've got my bicarbonate of soda open get that from any shop like that and then I'm just going to put it in and it should cause an exploding volcano a few seconds I'm just going to keep adding it in mm, it's not quite working yet it might take a few seconds I'm just going to go underneath it and give it a bit of a shake and it's coming up I can see it Should overflow like that. Now, there we go, and that's my volcano. If you want to add in more bicarbonate of soda, it will make it fill more or fizz up more. So that's up to you how much you want to put in. And the same with the vinegar. The more you add, the bigger it will be. So I've just done a little one so that you can do a really big one. There are three kind of categories of chemicals that you can have a look at even at home. There are acids, alkalis and neutrals. You can actually decide whether something is acid, alkali or neutral by using an indicator. Now at school we'll use indicators like litmus paper and universal indicator. You won't have that at home but what you could have or what you could get quite easily is a red cabbage. Okay so all you need to do is chop some up boil it in a pan for a while so ask parents for help okay and then once you've boiled it for a while you'll see that the water has become purple that's the indicator that you can use okay so when i've boiled some i've now let it cool and i've just put it into a jug okay so you can see lovely purple water when it's in the presence of acids it turns pink or red when it's neutral it stays the purple color and when it's with an alkali, it kind of goes like a, a bluey green colour, okay? So I'm going to show you how you can test some uh, for yourself. So I've got three old kind of miniature jam jars, but you could use glasses um, or any, any kind of container really. If it's um, kind of transparent, it's a little bit easier to see, but it doesn't have to be any containers that you've got. So in this one, you can see there's already something in it. I've just put some bicarbonate of soda in uh, with a couple of drops of water just to help it um, kind of dissolve a little bit. You can see it's not fully dissolved. Uh, in this one then, I'm going to put some water, just ordinary cold tap water. And in this one, I'm going to put some uh, white vinegar. You can use any other type of vinegar. Or you could use lemon juice um, or if you've got like oranges or anything like that, squeeze some of that juice into it, okay? All right, now I've got a pipette, but I'm assuming you won't have, but what you could use is just a syringe that comes with things like Calpol, Neurofen, things like that. So you could use anything like that if you've got anything like that at home. So I'm gonna put this, a few drops into here, and hopefully you should see it change the color. Okay, so can you see the difference in color? So that's turned pink, so that's an acid, which is vinegar. 
The water then is staying that lovely purple colour because it is neutral and the bicarb, once it's kind of on in, I'll just put a little bit more on just so you can see it a little bit clearer. You can see has turned that blue colour to show that it's an alkali. So just in the house ready we've got an acid, a neutral and an alkali. So why don't you try some different household things? As a general rule, anything that's used for cleaning uh, is going to be more of an alkali base and anything um, that is kind of tasting sour or bitter uh, is going to be a, a acid, okay? And neutral are things that you would kind of expect, things like water, um, some juices, things like that, okay? But just have a go for yourself. Fred Cabbage Indicator, you can get a lot just from boiling some cabbage. Um, and just have a go and see what acids and alkalis you've got around the house. What we're going to have a look at now is some chromatography and you can have a go at doing this at home. All you need is a piece of kitchen roll. So all you need to do is just cut the kitchen roll into some thin strips. Okay, now the glass that I'm going to use with the water is this size. So uh, I'm going to half this or just over half it. So you've got a strip like that. What you then do is get a normal uh, washable felt tip pen and about a centimetre up from the bottom, roughly a couple of centimetres maybe, you're just going to draw a dot. Okay, so you just draw a dot a couple of centimetres up from the bottom. What you then, well, I'm going to set up another one first. So after that, I'm just going to cut another strip. And I'm going to try a green. So again, a couple of centimetres up, pulling in the top. And I'm going to try an orange. And basically what chromatography does is it separates all the different colours from the inks. So you'll notice I've picked colours that are secondary uh, colours, so orange and green, and then brown, which is a mixture of all the colours. So once you've done that, get your glass of water, and you need to just put it in so that the bottom of the kitchen roll touches it. Do not get the spot in the water or it won't work, okay? So then I'm just holding that over the edge there and I'll do the same with the green on this side again just making sure that the spot itself doesn't go in the water the whole idea is that the water needs to run up the kitchen roll and the third and final one is the brown Okay, and then you need to leave those to run. So you can already see that the green has started to separate into some blue. And the orange has already started to separate into some yellow. And basically what's happening is that the different colours, the different dyes that are in the inks have different solubilities. So how easy it is to uh, dissolve in water. So as the water is running through the paper towel, the ones that are easily um, dissolved or soluble, more soluble are traveling further up the kitchen roll um, than the ones that are harder to dissolve. So it should give us a nice. Okay, so I've returned to the chromatography after about five minutes of letting them run. You can see then that the brown, you can see quite clearly um, that it's got some reds, some greens and some blues in there making that up. The orange then, it's not so clear where uh, the red is, but you can definitely see um, that it's got yellow that's come out of it. So that's made that lovely kind of uh, pattern there with the orange turning into yellow. And then the green, again, you can see where it's getting the lighter green, uh, presumably where the yellow would be, and then the blue at the top. Okay, so the blues come out of that there. Okay, so for this experiment, what you need is you need some milk, just normal milk. Okay, so I'm just going to pour a little bit in. Just pour some milk in, like that. Okay, 
I've not poured too much in. It's better if you can do it in a flat dish because you want it to be as big as it can be on the surface. I'm just going to shake it a little bit just to get rid of the bubbles so that it makes it easier to see. Just pop them with my finger as well. There we go. Right. Okay, then you need uh, some ink. Now, I only have blue ink, but you might have other colours. So what you need to do once you've got your ink is you just need to cut the top off of your ink cartridge or pierce it at the top like you would with a fountain pen so just uh, put it into your fountain pen and then you need to just get the ink out of the top of it which I'm just doing just now uh, I'm just struggling a little bit so just bear with me right okay here we go so I've just for me I've just chopped it like that instead because um, I don't have a fountain pen and then what you can do is you can just pour the ink into the milk Really slowly, just a drop at a time, but that will be easier if you've pierced it at the top. Get an adult to help you with that if you don't have a pen, a fountain pen to do it with, please. Uh, and then you just squeeze a drop in at a time. One drop, you don't need a lot. And what you can see, can you see the, the pretty colours there? It starts to separate out and form really nice patterns. Um, and you can do it a few more. If you do it with different colours, when they mix together, it makes really nice patterns. So watch, as each ink falls, it separates out again, watch. Each. Okay, but that will look a lot better if you've got different coloured ink. Um, I only have blue. It does look really good with different colours. And I think if you swirl it round as well, it makes a nice little pattern there too. So for this experiment, all you need is oil and some water. And this is um, a really simple experiment and it just shows you that oil and water really don't like mixing together. And you'll learn about that when you get to your GCSEs. So oil and water don't like mixing together. So what you can do is you can pour some water into a glass. Okay, it's quite pretty is this one, especially if you put it outside in the sun. Um, and then you can pour some oil on and watch what happens. You can see that the oil sits at the top and that's because it's less dense. So the oil will sit at the top of the water and then if you want to make it look pretty, what you can do is put your hand over the top of it. Um, you might need a smaller glass. I didn't have any smaller glasses. Put your hand over the top, give it a good shake. Just ignore the spillage for a second. And then what you can see is you can keep watching it separate back out again. And um, when I'm looking at it, if you look at it from the top that way, it makes it look really, really pretty. So that's quite a nice one to do and it can keep doing it again and again and again and it will keep separating out. Another easy experiment that you can have a go at is making your own lava lamp. So I've got just an empty uh, jar here but again if you've got a plastic bottle that will work quite well as well. Any sort of size really. Um, and then what else you need is you need some oil. Any oil is fine and some water. Okay. You can add other things into it as well such as glitter um sequins anything like that to make it pretty so i'm filling about a third of the jar uh, with water i'm going to add look a bit of food coloring just to uh, make it a little bit prettier and then you fill it with oil now, Miss Merchant's already showed you that oil and water don't mix. So you can see that again on here, okay, where the oil is making a layer above uh, the, the coloured water. So in order to make this kind of mix and look a, bit, a little bit more like a lava lamp, what you can get is something called an Alka-Seltzer, okay? So you can just get them from the shop. Um, you need parents to buy it. It is actually um, a medication, but it doesn't matter. You could anything that kind of was going to make it bubble, okay? So I've just used half and I've split it in half again and I'm just going to drop that into the bottom and just put the lid on and then you should see it making lovely nice bubbles forcing kind of that water and oil to move around making that lovely lava lamp effect. Nice and easy. Once the Alka-Seltzer is dissolved um, it will then settle. Just put another one in and you can keep it going.